In this video, we will show you how to get data from a Google Sheet and use dynamic cards to display products. We can add or remove products from the Google Sheet, but do not need to make any change of our voice flow canvas. This is very convenient compared to manually adding cards on voice flow, especially if we need to modify our products frequently. The last part is to generate leads and save data to Google Sheets without third-party platforms such as Airtable and Zapier, which can save you money. Here we will use a simple pizza bot to demo manually adding cards in VoiceFlow. We will add two cards, one for ordering small size pizza and the other for large size. In the beginning, we use a text block to greet the customer, saying I am the AI assistant of Mars Pizza Restaurant, and there are two buttons so the customer can click one to order a pizza. The bot will then ask what size the customer wants to order. We use a card to show the customer with small size pizza and the price. Two buttons are added, one for the customer to add to the order, the other to skip this pizza. The same is for the second card to order a large size pizza. When the customer finishes ordering, we use a text block to send a message, thanks for ordering. Let us run this to show how it works. Greeting goes first, then click on the button to order a pizza. We are going to order a large pizza, so skip this small size. The large size appears next with the title and the price. We click on this button to order a large size pizza. Finally, it shows thank you for ordering. In this simple demo, we use two cards to show our products. Cards are very useful to show products with good user interfaces. Let us take a close look. We first click on the small size card. We can add an image here either by uploading from local computer or placing an URL here. The title goes here, and we also can add the description of the product down here. The large size card is same. Do not forget we have two buttons for each card so that the customer can click on and respond. Overall this works just fine. But if we want to add more products, such as medium and extra large size pizzas, we have to add cards manually. This is not convenient if products are added or cancelled frequently. Next we will use dynamic cards and get data from Google Sheets, which is more efficient and smart. Let's first open the Google Sheet with our product data and get it ready so that VoiceFlow can get data from it. Click on the Share button on the top right corner. On the pop-up window, for the General Access, select the Anyone with the link, then click Done. Now let's go back to the Pizza Bot. In this new one, the first part is same as this part of the previous one, but we will get product data from a Google Sheet. Let's see how it works. We use an API block and choose Get because we will fetch data from the Google Sheet. Enter this URL here, which is provided by VoiceFlow. In the parameter section, we put ID here, and this is the ID of the Google Sheet. We can find the ID from the URL of our Google Sheet. Let's go to our Google Sheet, and we can get the ID, which is a part of the URL. The ID is highlighted here. We right-click on the mouse and make a copy of this ID. We go back to our pizza bot and paste the ID right here. The next parameter is sheet. We will let the API know which sheet it should fetch data from. At the bottom of our Google Sheet, we choose the size so that the API can look for data from this specific sheet which is named size. In the capture response section, we enter response.rows and we create a new variable called all sizes, which can save all the data from the Google Sheet after the API fetches the product data. Now let us test the API by clicking on the Send Request button. As you can see here, it successfully shows the JSON data from the Google Sheet, including columns and rows. The data in rows will be saved in our variable. We have two rows. Each row has name and price data. The small pizza has a 14-inch size, and the price is $14. The large pizza has a 16-inch size, and its price is $16. This tells us that with all the settings the API can fetch data from our Google Sheet, and the product data has been saved to our variable, which can be used later. Now let's move to the next step. Here we have a condition block. In the condition expression, we set the condition as all sizes, the length is larger than zero. In the actions, we have a variable called current size, which is set to be all sizes, dot pop. This will pop out one row data from all sizes array and save it to current size variable. If it does not match the condition, we have a no match path, which we will talk about at a later time. After the condition check, we save the data and we move to the next set block, which sets variables. Let us click on the block and take a look. Here we set two variables, size name and size price. 
The size name is set as current size dot name. Just a reminder, the current size is an array containing the current row of data. The size price is set as current size dot price. Next, let us take a look at the card block. Again, we can add an image here. We set the title using the size name variable. In the description, we show the price using the size price variable. We also have two buttons for the customer to click on. One is to add a small or large size pizza. We are using the size name variable. The other button is to skip this pizza, which allows the customer to move to the next product. These three blocks form a loop, which takes the data one row at a time and pops that row to save data to variables and show the corresponding product card sequentially. In the condition block, when all the product data have been shown, it will check if the length equal to zero. If yes, it will take the no match path and go to the last text block. It will show thank you for ordering and end the conversation. Now let us run the demo. We click here to start the test. The dialog pops up. After the greeting, we click on the button to order a pizza. The chatbot responds with great. What size do you want to order? Next, it shows product cards. The first one is the large size. But we are going to order a small size pizza. So we skip this product. Next we click on the button to add a small size. Lastly, it shows thank you for ordering and ends the conversation. So far, we have two products which are same as those in the previous demo. But we are very flexible to add more products without the need to manually add product cards in our VoiceFlow canvas. We only need to add products in our Google Sheet and the VoiceFlow remains unchanged. Let's go to our Google Sheet and add more products here. We are going to insert a new row. We add a medium size with price of $15. We also add an extra large size with price of $17. Let's go back to VoiceFlow and start the test again. We can see the newly added product card of extra large size pizza. We also can see the large size and medium size as well. In this way, we can modify our products on the Google Sheet and do not need to manually change the product cards on the VoiceFlow canvas. In a word, we can dynamically show the product cards with very high flexibility, efficiency, and convenience. Next, we are going to show how to save data to Google Sheets. Let us open a Google Sheet first. Click on the Extensions tab and select Add-ons, and then Get Add-ons. In the search, we enter web hooks for Sheets and click on the first one to install the add-on. Then choose an account and click on the Allow button. After the installation, we click on the add-on icon on the sidebar. Then click on the Create button and the Enable button. This takes us to the Settings page, and we need to turn the script API on. Go back to the Google Sheet and click on the Next and then the Create button. We need to refresh the page and the Webhooks tab appears on the top. Click on the Webhooks tab and Authorize. Choose an account and click on the Allow button. Now we are going to do the last step. Click on the add-on icon again and click on the Next button. We see the Webhook URL here. Let us make a copy and paste it on the notebook and save it for later use. Let's take a look at the third demo. The first part is same as the second demo which can fetch data from our Google Sheet and use dynamic cards to display products. The next part is for lead generation, which can save the customer's name, phone number, and address. After the thank you for ordering block, we ask for the customer's name. We then capture the user input and save the name in a variable. We also capture the user's phone number and address and save them in the variables. Next, we use an API block and choose post. We paste the webhook URL for our Google Sheet, which we saved previously. In the body section, we select from data. Enter name and select the variable which has saved the username. We enter the number and select the variable which has saved the user's phone number. Finally, we enter the address and select the variable which has saved the user's address. Now let's do a test by clicking on the send request button. We enter the name, phone number, and address and click on the Generate button to send the data to our Google Sheet. It shows success, which means that the data has been sent to the Google Sheet. Let us go to our Google Sheet, and yes, the data are shown here. Back to the pizza bot, we have the last blocks just to thank the customer's ordering. Finally, let us run the bot to see how it works. The first part is same as the previous demo. Now we enter the name, phone number, and address. The data will be sent to our Google Sheet. It says, Thank you, John. I appreciate your order. Goodbye. Let us check the Google Sheet, and we see that the data are saved here. 
This shows that we can read product data from a Google Sheet and generate leads and save data onto another Google Sheet. In summary, we have shown how to create dynamic cards to show products using data from our Google Sheet, which gives us high flexibility to add and remove products frequently without the need of changing the assistant. We also have shown lead generation with a Google Sheet to avoid using a third-party platform like Airtable. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.